So when it came to 2011, what was your red eye of heaven? We asked you, the viewers, to email us your best on-air moments of the year, and after tallying up the 1.2 million votes, we came up with your top four picks. Let's get started, shall we? Coming in at number four was professional wrestler Mick Foley's unfortunate Google incident regarding fellow guest and GoProud chairman Chris Barron. But you're allowed to because go proud, you're, you're in charge of it. No one's going to fire you. That's a good point. Yeah. Your, your biggest song was saying insulting and outrageous things. I mean, I'm not being facetious. I mean, it was <laughs> insulting and outrageous to the person you sang it to, right? What song? Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. <laughs> right, well, I'm not, uh, right? <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. No, you're not the guy I think you are? No. <laughs> You're not the lead singer for the Spin Doctors? <laughs> I looked you up, man. I love you. Are you? No You're way. right, they have the same name. We do you have the same, same name. name. Oh, do we look oh, anything no. alike? I was oh, him oh. a long time ago. Everyone, yeah, that was a long time that ago. It was one of the things like that. Yeah, I feel a little ashamed, embarrassed right now. <laughs> that was an amazing moment. It was an amazing <laughs> We'll <laughs> never get back. My, my, uh, that might be one of the greatest moments that of all time. Was, wow. I have no idea. I was actually this is great for everyone but me. <laughs> uh, Chris, you asked, isn't the whole point of social media? <laughs> That's why I don't even need to say anything. Uh, Happy ending to that story. Mick and Chris now both share a converted loft in a particularly progressive area of Brooklyn. Uh -huh. <laughs> to them both. Your third choice was a, an alleged look at me in my apartment when I was out sick a couple of months ago. Ray Cowley says police only follow leads and do not single out groups based on religion. Anyway, TV's Andy <laughs> Levy wanted to comment on the story, but since he couldn't be here today, let's go live to him at his apartment. Andy. Staff. I told yeah. you. I told you he doesn't wear boxer briefs. Uh, <laughs> you know, Bill, you send someone a video in confidence. <laughs> you did not say I, I couldn't. Forward. I specifically said don't show this to anyone. There have been some cat videos you sent me that were very clear that I was not supposed and to. That forward. was one of them. That was not that one, was one of them. them. <laughs> All right, moving on to number two. Who could forget my not so friendly Twitter back and forth with hip hop star and Rihanna beater Chris Brown? And my very sincere apology. Welcome back. Let's find out if we've got anything wrong so far. For that, we go to TV's Andy Levy. Hey, Andy. Hey, Greg. Uh, before we begin, I want to take a minute to talk about something that happened Tuesday night. Around 8 o'clock here on the East Coast, R&B singer Chris Brown tweeted, No more planking for me unless it's on a sexy lady, LOL. Mm. So I saw this tweet, and I retweeted it, adding, you spelled punching wrong. <laughs> Obviously a reference to the fact that Brown was arrested in 2009 for assaulting his then-girlfriend, Rihanna. But now, in the light of day, I'd like to apologize to Chris Brown and to his fans who are known as Team Breezy. To Mr. Brown, I apologize for referencing the fact that you beat the crap out of Rihanna. It was disrespectful of me to draw attention to the fact that you put your girlfriend in the hospital. And further, it was not my place to make people remember that you beat a woman with your fists, leaving her with multiple facial contusions, a bloody nose, and a split lip. I know that now. I also appreciate the fact that you tweeted me, letting me know that children conduct themselves better than I do. You are correct, and I can only hope to one day mature to the point where I can conduct myself in a more adult manner, possibly by throwing a chair out of a window and storming out of a building with my shirt off. I ask only, I ask only for your patience. To Team Breezy, I would like to also say that I'm sorry, and thank you for your thousands of tweets, which taught me a lot about the creative possibilities of spelling, grammar, and syntax. Possibilities I never even imagined before last night. In particular, I'd like to thank the female members of Team Breezy, who have taught me that as long as you can sing, you can beat the living hell out of a woman, and other women will still love you. <laughs> And lastly, I apologize to everyone for using Twitter to subtly address the fact that I think it's disgusting that a guy who put his girlfriend in the hospital can, a mere two years later, be warmly welcomed back into society and appear on shows such as Saturday Night Live as if, as if everything he did magically never happened. It won't happen again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Thank there you. you really, Greg, the only thing Chris Brown is guilty of? What? A felony. <laughs> Uh, another happy ending alert. Chris and I both now share a converted loft in a particularly progressive area of Brooklyn. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people don't know wow. that. Yeah, yeah. You're the original odd couple. 
We, re- yeah. we really are. That's yeah, great. I yeah. don't. I don't hit women, and he does. And he does. Yeah. 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 Can I mean, we get along? You guys agree to yeah. not agree yeah, exactly. at all? Yeah. 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 All right. Time to take a break. But when we return, your choice for the top red eye moment of 2011, featuring two very special people. Two regular red eye guests, two wildly different backgrounds, two completely separate sensibilities, and one magic moment of TV. I give you, and remember there's no gives these backsies, the argumentative stylings of comedian Jesse Joyce and Daily Beast contributor Dana Vashon. How is your cookbook coming along of recipes for eating poor people? <laughs> That's charming from a dude who one year for Christmas in the 1980s received eight copies of Leo the Late Bloomer from various uncoordinated relatives. Wow. You must have come up with that uh, 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 guy who visits uh, the Brooks Brothers outlet more than he does his own invalid grandmother. Um, You would know a thing or two about trash having come of age playing cigarette butt hunter atop a Con Ed landfill. You look like the product of what would happen if David Spade had sex with the movie Dead Poets Society. Keep it coming, dude who did stand-in work for the saddles and True Grit. I know, I know why you're acting like this, and that's because your father used to bring you to work to watch him fire people. That is... It's that kind of laceration that I would expect from a man who wasted his 20s walking around in dark sunglasses because people just don't f- get it, man. Look, hey, isn't your DeLorean double parked in a handicap space? <laughs> oh, man. And another happy uh, ending, uh, Bill. Jesse and Dana now share a converted loft in a particularly progressive area of Brooklyn. Really? <laughs> yeah. i, I got to get into one of your yep. potluck dinners. That's a but, crazy thing. No, we have fun. It's, it's, it's me, Mick, Chris, Dana, Jesse, uh, and, and Chris Brown. It's like <laughs> Sesame Street for degenerates. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought they were three out. separate progressive areas of Brooklyn. It's, it's, <laughs> it's one area uh-huh. of Brooklyn. It's, it's three separate uh, uh, lofts. Okay. But they all go oh, shopping oh, to the yeah, same. That is a progressive area. Yes, store. it's a yeah. very progressive area. Yeah. That does it for today's adventure. If you're new here, please subscribe. Take it one step further and ring that notification bell. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big old like and a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. Right on.